Pre-run episode 23. She looks calm and sleepy, but she's the real enemy here. Yes, the 0% pass rate. It's all speculation. Okay. Explain to me how we're all gonna fail or die. Here we go again. We already have the classic. If you don't pass, you deserve to fail. Come to think of it, it's an odd position. And this does exist in real life, I guess. Be the one giving the exam with no educational input. Episode 23, Conquering the Labyrinth. Oh, yeah, yeah. King's Tomb. A modest testing location. Alright, that's a relief. Fighting immediately ensues. ふかのを可能にするのが一級魔法使い。A simple exam. <laughs> Okay, at least you give them a backup to survive. Okay, already this is like light years above the first stage. Our points for this test already. Points in her favor. Well, obvious one out of the way. She's not reveling in the students' deaths. Prioritizing their safety over all else, since the goal is development of great mages and not dead mages. This might be a very difficult exam, but it doesn't seem like she made this dungeon and created all sorts of arbitrary little things like a barrier and birds. And so even if it's difficult, you can say it's fair because it's something that exists in real life that they might have to do. And also, even though she's just a proctor, she's already providing some kind of emotional guidance specifically to One Punch Man about the mentality that she expects from a mage, which also is a little bit Hunter Hunter-esque because the whole you must be able to rise to the challenge of things you don't think you can win or if you're really engaged you're not wasting energy occupying yourself with thoughts of your own failure none of them are rushing in i got a little thing going here and no teams this time so they can all cooperate <laughs> Oh, God, this is on you now at this point. Go, go, you go, please go. You're the problem. <laughs> and so? Bye, Felicia, etc. You got the little click clicks. Sometimes the students are the problem. Bring Dankin. Oh. Oh, wow, she's also concerned for her life. Oh, I'll just watch you silently and judge you as you make mistakes. Let's just hope there are no mimics. And don't forget, always go the wrong way first so that you can get the chests. The worst feeling is when you go the right way the first time by accident. This is a very specific comment to RPGs and cannot substantiate this at all. But I think developers have a right bias for the correct path. So to try to get the items, I always go left first. 90% of the time, it works every time. Like, live my life in them. Hit us with that flashback, Freerun. Yeah, it's odd. Usually, you know, you kind of tolerate dungeons. You don't love them. I love clearing the dungeon. Here it is. Because you didn't get the chest. Right. Oh no, he, no, he's a gamer, he knows! Yeah, so we go left. Damn right. <laughs> Ice is just not a gamer. Fun, yeah, but also the item you need to beat the boss. Oh, okay, so you just want to get the Really focus on the path. You know, part of him is also terrified of what's to come. Yeah, or like that one rare item that seems insignificant that you later need for the final weapon. She always has this dichotomy of like, 
criticizing him or making fun of him while smiling. You could, wait, why didn't we take Kanan the other one? I thought we were a team. And you didn't take Denkin? I mean, the fact that you can't all work together doesn't mean you can't... Some of you work together. I'm with thinking on this to an extent, yeah. If you could avoid the squabbling. Free run taking, taking shots for some reason. <laughs> uh oh. This is foreshadowing. Let someone else do it. Don't, you have, I mean, come on. It's RPG, you have scan. You you were born with scan, it was a default skill. Oh, she already scanned it. But, I like my odds. But mimics also drop items, you still gotta fight the mimics. Alright, I'm not even gonna argue, go for it. At least they don't look life-threatening. Mild damage. Sometimes the, the mimics will destroy you. Some games. Those end up being like the optional bosses. Like, what's this? What's the series I'm thinking of? Oh yeah, Trails of Cold Steel. The optional chest will, will mess you up. Watching and silently judging. But in horror. Oh, that's what that was. I saw it in the ceiling too. I thought it was like a shadow thing or something, right? It was in the ceiling. Oh, that's rough, buddy. <laughs> there we go, first fight. I think it just grows on me with every episode. <laughs> yeah, looks pretty great. Looks pretty cool. Nice. Oh, he's fast as hell, too. Her ability kind of reminds me of Final Fantasy XV in that shot. Oh, no. The music makes it so much, too. It's such a great battle theme. If this were an RPG, that would, that would be a really great random battle theme. Yep. This is, this is a big test right here. Yeah, you gotta... All the people in the sand would have just left. This was like a must-have item for everyone. That's way more literal than I thought. I thought it would be a warp. <laughs> when the sun is rising. This is how the exam ends. Homer, are you still holding on to the can? She's holding on to the grimoire. You could get out of this terrible situation you're in if you only let go of the thing you're trying to grab. And this is yet another furin, fur, furin, freerin ass shot. It's a look. How often does this happen? Right, ourselves together. They, they packed so many RPG details into this. Again. Well, they're going to come in, into a boss at the end, though. Maybe the king. Alright, this confirms that they, they do have some kind of item compressing spell. Or just RPG inventories are a regular part of this world. Yeah, is it sure to watch Freerun or sure to watch Fern? Understandable. Going into something for a really long time at a certain level of depth, no matter how much you love it, on some level you hate it too, right? Because it's a captive force. And maybe this is not always the case, but it's hard for me to imagine. The things you love will come with all sorts of peripherals that are not so enjoyable or not, not so suited to you. And it's a lot of the same thing. A lot of it will probably be drilling and little peripheral support activities, troubleshooting, responsibility coming into a thing also changes the tone of it. I wonder if the magic thing between Free and Infern doesn't also fit in with the overall theme of the show about enjoying the moments along the way rather than thinking about the destination. Free 
we're not as concerned with the results of her magic, though it's important as much as the, the discovery and acquisition of it. Also, from experience, it is really hard to transition in a field from child to adult because you're still developing. You're still exploring yourself, but you're putting all of your energy points into this one thing that you liked at one time, maybe even before your cognition was fully formed. To this day, even as an adult, my most significant career started when I was five. And then by the time I was 13, I mean, I had a lot of technical challenges because I was changing physically, but also, you know, I was like becoming a teen. My mindset was changing. Other things seemed important. I had the natural urge to like explore and get off this one track. I wanted to be a kid. I didn't want to have so much responsibility. I was tired of everyone looking at me to do these things always. Like on some level, they emotionally relied on me. It got exhausting towards the end. So that combined with the logistical challenges was enough for me to just drop, drop it completely, which is a shame in some manner of thinking about it because it was something I initially really enjoyed. Like I loved it and I think it was well suited for me. On the other hand, I have virtually zero regrets about it because I was following that instinct in that way. I think it would have been good either way. You know, I would have come around the other side if I kept going. Fern will too, undoubtedly. It's like too much to walk away from, but I get the feeling. I get the sentiment. I get how it can start to feel like a drain and a burden. It's largely Freerin.私はそんなフリーレン様の姿が好きだから一緒に魔法を追い求めているんだと思います。that's sweet. She's watching Fern, I think. This is deliberate. I think a lot of the activities I've explored in my life have been connected to a larger social component. Sometimes this is something I realize later, when a certain social arrangement or situation ends, and then so does the activity. It's like, oh, I guess that's why I was doing it. I mean, even YouTube. I really enjoy watching TV. I love to overanalyze and I love the sound of my own voice, but I think if there was no comment feature, I would never have gotten hooked on it. I remember distinctly having like, you know, five subscribers doing God knows what <laughs> when I started out and just thinking it was so cool that comments were coming in. Hard to explain. That's sort of been the glue this whole time. But I can make a parallel for that too, in, in terms of free run. It's become this, right? And there's a lot of uh, things that go along with it. A lot of work that's not so enjoyable. And sometimes that takes away from or distracts from or leaves me less time for the part of it I really love, which is like the discussion, the interactions. And it's easy to forget. It's easy to get bogged down in the details of things. And then every now and then you'll have a moment where it's like, oh, this is why, this is why I love it. I remember now. And then you get this renewed vigor, <laughs> this huge boost for the activity. What? Oh, I thought there was an internet problem. That was abrupt. What just happened? This looks like something that gets filled up with water. Tell me they're not students. They really did not time that well. Would you trust your life to a, a leaf wall? Oh, they're, they're just staples. They're, they're bosses. Oh, they're... Oh, interesting. This is Devil May Cry. Oh, they got a match up against themselves. Or Shadow Link, another, another example. It's such a cool concept. Damn, finding yourself is, is wild. They don't seem to talk, which is maybe an advantage. Oh. Oh, they got... They... Okay. Probably not the boss. This is some high-level manipulative then. I look like that when I'm fighting? Hmm, I wouldn't count on that. I'm wondering if it isn't the case that the bigger the group, the harder it is for the controller of, of these doppelgangers to give them all the same power. Is it? Wait, what? Is it fr it's Freerun? It is Freerun. Why is Freerun... Oof. Oh, there's only one person who can beat this. And that's Freerun. <laughs> oh, it'd be really cool to see Fern go against this, or knowing Freerun the best. Dark Freerun is cool. The only saving grace is that it seems like these projections are a little bit weaker than the versions they're copying, due to it being one person or one creature having to split up their mana. This is a much better, more interesting stage of the exam than the first one, so far, at least. I think very directly, maybe somewhat obviously, the whole dungeon thing speaks very directly to the themes of the show, about not thinking so much about the destination. The destination, you know, largely being death and irrelevance, in a certain sense. I think probably most critical to the show 
Fern's death. You enjoy the journey, you enjoy the moments, which doesn't mean the destination is not important. It doesn't mean the victory isn't important. It doesn't mean whatever things are, you have to love it. I think it should not be used as way of an excuse or a concession where like, I'm too afraid to do the things I actually want. I'm too afraid of having larger goals. So I will pretend I'm above it by saying that I'm enjoying the journey along the way. Like it's both. And I think the journey becomes more enjoyable along the way if you are really taking things on honestly, openly, having some kind of vision of yourself that you're trying to go towards, having grand dreams, but nevertheless to enjoy the, the moments, to enjoy the moments of beauty, the quest itself. I think in some things there's a desire to rush to the finish because it's painful to be working towards something and spending a lot of energy on something without being assured of the result, to know on some level that all your efforts might be fruitless. So you want to get to the result as fast as possible so you can dispel that weight you're carrying, that deep breath you take of relief when you finish a dungeon. But that will either come or it won't. The anxiety is neither here nor there for that. You may as well have faith and enjoy the moments. And I think one way to boost that sense of faith is that, as I mentioned before, you can take a broader view of what victory is, where your goal is not a specific target or like, I can only be happy. I can only get the things I truly need with this one very specific outcome I've envisioned, even if you have like one placeholder at a time. And this, I don't think, is not just a refocusing of the lens, you know, zooming out as a way of escaping disappointment or risk or whatever. I think it actually just is true that the things we want are more general than the faces we attach to our vision of, of that thing coming true. So if your goal is something like your own culmination of spirit, self-actualization or whatever you want to call it, glorious living, real self-mastery, being in a good place, feeling invigorated by the world and life. There are just so many ways to that path that failure is almost guaranteed unless you give up or maybe even if you get too attached to one very narrow vision of what that means. If you focus too much on the sort of material elements of the thing instead of the, the thing itself, which is going to be a function of you. For example, for Fern, it might not end up being magic. It's hard to really know at this point. It feels like she's exploring herself. She will get there. And in the meantime, it's really important that she enjoy her moments with Freerun. And the same goes for Freerun to Fern. Thank you.